so now we'll talk about uh, azure app services so we are completed with the vng now we'll talk about azure app services so app services is a platform as a service so what it is platform as a service quickly build deploy and scale web apps and apis on your terms see this is for the web applications so generally uh, we have three kind of scenarios before cloud or maybe before virtualization when we are in the traditional data center what we used to have one physical server and inside this physical server we install up uh, operating system on top of that application so this is how previously it used to run and later on once uh, virtualization came into the picture like in the same uh, physical data center but virtualization has been introduced vmware hyper v zen so when virtualization came into the picture so this was divided into multiple virtual machines and each virtual machine you can run individual application in you can uh, use the resources in an efficient manner so that's what uh, the advantage of this one so you will run operating system inside virtual machine and then install the applications so now in the cloud is also we are using same thing what we are doing infrastructure as a service iis so infrastructure as a service what we are doing we are creating a virtual machine so once we create a virtual machine we are going to os is by default it's coming along with this virtual machine but manually you are installing everything like uh, java libraries or whatever the application based on that whether it's a dot net application or python any node.js application you are installing configuring everything you are managing it so back end they are supporting and uh, this hardware but remaining everything you need to manage right so instead of that now they are providing application as a service so for application as a service app services you need you don't need to worry about the underlying uh, hardware whether maintenance of this server or maintenance of this operating system nothing you need to worry whatever the code you have the application code for your web application you just take that code and deploy it so it is going to be deployed so that is an advantage and lot of other advantages it is also available inside this app services so if you see here so azure app service is an http based service for hosting web applications rest apis and mobile backends so you can develop in your favorite language be it .NET, java ruby everything front end node js php any application so you can able to deploy that application inside this app services so app service adds the power of microsoft azure such as security load balancing auto scaling and here when you <coughs> create this machine separately you need to configure what auto scaling also so you need to configure auto scaling separately lot of things you need to do individually but here lot of things will get automatically inside this app services so why i need to use app service so multiple languages and frameworks so what are the language you are using it need a framework so on that that application will run so they are providing all the frameworks managed production environment so managed production environment means i will show you like with there is a concept called deployment slots uh, deployment center is available with the help of that easily you can manage so server automatically patches and maintains the os and language frameworks so spend time writing great apps and let azure worry about the platform so you need to focus what are the purpose of your business to run that application the some example some x y z business you are doing with that web application the website so you are you can focus on your business instead of worrying about the underlying platform you can completely focus uh, how to upgrade your website upgrade in the sense what kind of features you want to add uh, how to improve that website uh, how to gain more attention from the users what kind of features like these kind of from business side you can able to spend time instead of wasting your time for all the underlying uh, platforms remaining stuff 
so that is what like cloud is also has been introduced right instead of managing your own data center full headache is gone now simply managing someone else is managing and we are just using it same way and this is one more good thing like devops optimization setup continuous integration and deployment with azure devops so you can integrate with azure devops like generally azure devops means here like instead of jenkins git uh, in devops whatever the tools we use for ci cd here azure devops will take care of it in azure so to this app service with the help of azure devops you can deploy the applications to this like how we deploy application to virtual machines same way you can able to integrate with this app service then easily what are the changes you have done to the code once you done it you can able to deploy continuous deployments also you can plan it will go and deploy so lot of other features is also available for this one and good thing is they are supporting linux also and uh, previously they you not used to support linux but now they are supporting linux also because a lot of other applications runs on linux so this is about this app service let's go and see what is inside this one and uh, and in the meantime let me go and delete this uh, virtual network gateway and this virtual machine and app services you can search for app service and here you can click on create so here this is a subscription and i am going to create a lxy rg this is a common name i want to give and what is the name of your application uh, this one mm, this is the name i'm providing so if this team is already using someone else in this azure in the complete world then it is not going to access because if you see galaxy tech dot azure websites dot net with this url we can able to access this application through browser so it should be unique for example if i give zoom see the app name zoom is not available means it's someone else is already using it so it should be a unique one galaxy tech this is the name i'm providing and uh, publish code you want to run this application with the code or maybe you have any container already available then container will be attached to it so or else a static website so actually your app deployment with the managed global availability so static web app means you are going to create your own so i don't want i am use going to use the code and runtime stack here so what is the application what framework it expects you need to select here so java ruby python node js asp.net .net is there so you can select anything so i am going to run uh, windows uh, iis like previously we, we were using uh, nginx right we were selecting always linux instance means virtual machine and instead that i was installing nginx as a web service this time we'll choose windows web service which is iis so for that we can select dot net as a framework and if you see when i select dot net as a framework for linux also it is giving option which means previously dot net was not supported for linux but now it's became universal so dot net is also supporting linux why because they want to do business so when you are starting a cloud and if you don't support the other famous platform linux then half of the customers will not come to you because for every customer obviously they'll have both operating systems windows and linux and uh, in your cloud if you are only supporting windows means half of the customers will go to aws so that's why they started developing in such a way that 
they should support linux also so dotnet now is supporting by for linux also so you can linux but i am going to select windows and uh, pricing plan so here app service plan pricing tier determines the location here even though underlying platform managing by them at least you need to select what kind of plan you are choosing so that from that it is going to uh, use the resources so windows plan and uh, pricing plan if you want to see pricing plans here or you can able to create new uh, let's see uh, application service plan 01 this is the name i am providing and this is a pricing plan you can see so what is this pricing plans So if you see here different pricing plans you can able to see this is free this first one is free and uh, but free for 60 minutes per day so only 60 minutes per day and 1 gb of memory are going to get 1 gb of storage are going to get uh, the scale instance not applicable means that feature is not available scaling is not possible cost per hour this is free and uh, same way you can see different uh, plans here so here you can see acu so azure compute unit acu means so you can see 100 100 acus means it's almost like one cpu so previously azure used to have a uh, servers like uh, we are selecting b series right as of now whenever we want to create vms we are selecting b series before b there is an a series was there a series machines like uh, one cpu one gb ram one cpu two gb ram same way so whenever you are using here it as an acu means uh, 100 means it's like a a series uh, one server means one cpu so that is how it will calculate so if you see here one vcpu means one and if you see 195 means here vcpu means four premium so this way it is going to calculate and you can see the price cost per hour in indian rupees over here so dev test for less demanding workloads per production you can able to see okay so for isolated app service environment these are more high end if you see this is the cost per hour and it should uh, feature overview basically it should show um, previously it used to show nice diagram like what are the features we are going to get not only when we are selecting this plan in this plan features will be here let's see what kind of features means auto scaling custom domain ssl certificate all these features are going to get for this app service what we are creating based upon the plan which we are taking but now they did not mention all those information like hardware view feature view okay sorry so when i click on feature view you can see custom domain here i, I was not looking this uh, tabs previously that uh, it was in different uh, screen now it is showing in a different way and when i clicked on learn more about it yeah, instead of that here only you can see if you see here see this is a custom domain auto scale daily backups staging slots zone redundant cost per hour cost per month so these features will be applied based on the plan so if you see custom domain is not available means for free nothing is available 
and uh, for shared d1 also it is not available from here you have okay so let's take uh, this one so you are going to get custom domain custom domain means what while i was creating it was giving one url right what is the name i selected galaxy tech dot azure websites dot net if you don't want that name these things we discussed during firewall uh, traffic manager not firewall traffic manager application gateway so if we want our own domain name what we have done we created dns zones and there we provided record same way so the name which is providing by this app service if you don't want then you can have your own domain name that feature is available custom domain and auto scale is possible but basically auto scale means it should provide up to what number it is going to be auto scaled now why it is not providing that i don't know so <coughs> means 20 up to 20 it will tell for this particular uh, plan it will scale up to 20 for a specific plan it will scale up to 30 that way number used to mention i don't know now what is this rule now daily backups backup for your application service also is possible staging slot this i will tell you once we create this i will explain you in detail zone redundant maximum it is not possible on these servers you know zone redundant means this app service will be available in multiple zones so if something happened to one zone availability zone still your application will be up and running if you want that service few options are available like premium isolated so this way you can select so if i i just let me see you full details for app service app service limit basic automation limits okay so hardware overview so <coughs> basic b1 let's see what is the features basic b1 custom domain auto scale manual daily backup staging slots not available what about standard s1 so we'll take this one standard s1 okay so standard s1 we can see auto scale maximum everything is possible except zone redundant it's okay for us so that we can able to go and see what is there here so maximum staging slots 5 daily backups 10 auto scale tools and custom domain is also possible we'll just go and select a standard s1 so this is the one i'm selecting 1.75 gb ram and almost it's like a 100 acu means one cpu if you want more information you can able to search acu in azure azure compute units this is also available in uh, aws also the concept of azure Compute provides a way of comparing compute performance across azure keys so this was a previously if you see here 100 ACUs means one CPU means one core that way it will work previously like uh, a1 series was there so this is how it will calculate one CPU so if it is almost 190 plus uh, ACUs means two two vCPUs so I'm selecting the standard s1 this is a service plan so select it and now zone redundant is disabled because this option we selected the service plan so it is not going to have next to deployment so this is uh, we can integrate with the github or azure devops so that you can use it as a deployment also whatever the code is available in the your git repo so from there directly not sync with your voice 
is it for everyone like kiran babu is saying uh, not sync with your voice screen is lagging is it for everyone or uh, if it is everyone then problem from my end might be network issue okay okay so continuous deployment means uh, generally your screen is lagging i don't know where is the problem okay yeah but i don't think internet is having problem here we have very good internet okay so uh, generally deployment means what whenever if uh, your code is here your github code and uh, you have your virtual machines here or kubernetes cluster here and in between jenkins server will be there this will pick up the code and it will deploy the application over here this is what this jenkins will do ci cd means whatever the code is there testing everything will be done ci and then it will go and deploy into the machines the same way here also if you have your you want to do continuous deployment then select your github account and uh, select your repository and branch uh, if you integrate this way then what are the code is available in this repo and in which branch and that will be deployed to this web app services automatically that way you can deploy based upon your requirement but we are not into this devops so we can ignore this uh, concept and networking uh enable public access yes on because once this is up uh, this is a web service so obviously we want to access from the internet only if you don't want through access this internet means some sites will be internal for example uh in some companies the websites of that company will open when we go to office only internally within the private network those will be not accessible through the internet so those kind of sites means you can make it off but this is a like public accessible you can select it yes and uh, enable network injection means what again this is you are want to give access to internally your network so select or create a virtual network that is the same region as your new app so if you select networking then internally if you want to provide access all these things you can configure but i don't have anything internally so that's why internal network is not required monitoring if you want to monitor like uh, application insights it will capture everything azure monitor application insights performance management service for developers and devops professionals enable it blow it automatically monitor your application so if you want you can enable this monitoring tags review and create So estimation price 5000 inr per month for this plan what are the plan we took if this website is expecting database in the back end like some applications need database in the back end if it is a dynamic site and uh, 
it's fetching some information from the database that is also you can integrate for this app service in the backend database so that it will go and connect to the database and uh, it will fetch the information whatever is expecting so that is also possible so this is done go to the resource and it is created this is the name which i provided and you know this basic information and you can see this is a default domain it is provided and they provide some internal uh, browser also if you click on this browse so your app is running and waiting for your content so this is by default uh, uh internally whatever we selected windows right so windows is providing iis if you use linux then it will use some whether it may be use nginx or http in previous sessions in the networking sessions when we were talking uh, uh, some networking concepts i selected nginx linux os and nginx as a web service i installed and when i was accessing through ip we were getting some welcome to nginx right same way this is for ias so internally it is running your web application is running and waiting for your content so this is some default some sample code is available so this is a domain name so internet through internet it is getting access even you can also try it galaxytech.azurewebsites.net you will get this one and uh, now if you see deployment slots so deployment slots is a you haven't had any deployment slots okay so deployment slots is a very very good feature in this azure i don't know whether this feature has been introduced in the other clouds uh, aws or maybe uh, gcp but previously one year back when i was working on aws at that time i don't see this feature very very good feature like uh, generally if you talk about on premises data center so in on premises data center basically you'll have different environments uh, production environment acceptance and uh, dev environment uh, test environment like this multiple environments will be there so whenever developers want to do any testing first initially they'll do test on uh, test environment some basic testing so everything will be done and then dev it will go and uh, some some environment is for uh, functional testing they'll functional team testing guys will do the functional testing and performance testing after that everything is working fine then it will be deployed into the production so whenever you are doing this environments obviously you need to maintain for administrators whether it may be devops or maybe for developers like especially for the devops guys or maybe uh, admin guys they need to maintain equal uh, versions of uh, all the environments like for test environment same os version should be there same libraries should be there same uh, uh, dependencies like frameworks also same should be there then only it will work in some environment if you are using different tomcat version in another you are if you are using different another tomcat version then you cannot uh, test it properly so all should be in the same version then only you can go live to the production so this is an active work to the administrators or devops guys to maintain everything do patching for example i did a patching on some dev environment all the servers os patching done it it is updated with some uh, minor versions and uh, this is not updated i have done testing with uh, dev but here i did not tested the application then if when i tested it yeah, i might get some errors so in all this work you need to maintain but here if you see you have a deployment slots so at the time of uh, selecting that plan i was telling like staging slots right we got only five slots so here you can as per your plan you can create five slots so what you can do add slot here and uh, enter a name here galaxy tech 
uh, okay so i am just giving dev here and if you see the url valaxy tech hyphen dev dot azure websites dot com and uh, clone settings from this one so this is currently it is production and we are cloning from this one to this one add it within one or two minutes whatever is your production environment assume there is a code is running inside this okay in the production environment and everything will be cloned and it will create a new environment for you dev environment so like this you can create in this deployment slots five because as per your plan see successfully created slot dev close and you can see this one if i click on this and uh, if i here also i have browse option if i click on browse here also you can see where web app is running and waiting for your content so this is the dev environment so here the good thing is when i go here whenever you want to do any changes like uh, Valaxy tech hyphen dev you did testing or maybe what I'll do uh, Right now I'm inside this one. Okay, right now I'm inside this dev so here mm -mm -mm. App service editor preview like we have a Visual Studio code, right? Like Microsoft is providing free Visual Studio code. Same way, integrated editor is available, app service editor. You click on it. Right now, I'm inside this dev. Dev, okay. So if I click on this one, we can able to edit the code. So app service editor provides an in-browser editing experience for your app code. So open editor. Whatever the default code they are using we can able to do some edit into it if it is our real code then uh, We will do it in the github or maybe Bitbucket, wherever our code was there. We can do the changes over there like Okay, if you see here hosting start dot HTML HTML This is the code which was using to execute this content so here uh, web app is running and waiting for your content this line is somewhere we need to see here where it is <coughs> here you see your web app is live but we don't have your content yet if you're already deeper it could have taken five minutes for your content to show up so sir come back soon is this a default one or something else it is going to come actually it should come different message okay maybe this is a default one so what i'm going to do Welcome to mm -mm -mm. Am I doing at the same line Because I don't see this if you have already deployed it could have to take a five minutes this information. I don't see Okay, anyhow we don't need to save it automatically it will save okay if you see here uh, It's it will be like auto save. We don't need to save it manually and uh, now we go and uh, see here okay okay i'm doing uh, the below one okay maybe something else is there on top i'm poor in coding so if you are anyone developer is there let me know 
how to change this and where exactly it is available okay this one i think yeah correct i got it welcome to Galaxy Tech. this is enough saved and now again i'll go back here so this is what i am trying like assume this is some testing has been done on dev environment everything is ready and this needs to be go to the production in general in real time what happens whenever you want to go to production environment first we'll do everything on the acceptance environment testing everything is done and after that what we'll do we'll create a change request we'll mention everything backup plan test plan uh, and rollback plan what happens if something happens how you will roll back all this change mandatory apart from that you will execute pipeline all the maintenance things you need to do right the same thing if we go back here uh, now within a minute you can able to go live to the production now very simple so pro production if you see this is a pro production one as of now the url is see galaxy tech dot azure websites is a production one galaxy tech hyphen dev dot azure websites is a dev but some changes code has been changed in the dev and now it whenever i access galaxy tech dot azure websites dot net i should get galaxy tech here okay so now what i am going to do is very simple here you can see swap here swap and from where to where you want to swap from source is this one galaxy tech dev destination is this one galaxy tech target so now very simple swap it doesn't take much time within one to two minutes it will swap and now if i go and access the urls production url i should get galaxy technologies so let's go and see that so here also you need to create change request in this way also it doesn't mean that process is process anywhere but the work what you do that will reduce and you cannot able to connect to your underlying uh, platform here which vms they are using like uh, how to connect to it that is not possible only you are selecting plan and one more thing is whatever this another environment which is created it is also running with the code so here swap is completed successfully and uh, let me if you see here production traffic 100% dev no traffic and uh, this is a production url and this is a content it is there if i click enter now galaxy tech dot azure websites dot net is ready with the production deployment done simply there is spelling mistake understood so this is how it got what will come over here when i refresh this dev dot azure websites dot net it was with Galaxy Tech, right? So I'll just refresh it. So it is coming with this information. Why? Very simple. What is happening in the back end? So whenever you have two environments, this is prod and this is dev. Only URL is getting mapped. That's it the data whatever code is there here the code is there and here the code is there now what happens whatever the url is there that will be mapped azure uh, galaxy tech dot azure websites dot net what are this url when we are using this url was with this one previously now when you swapped it only this url is coming from here and it's sitting here it's routing here means mapping so whenever someone is accessing it is taking the code from this particular uh, slot that's it that is a different it is happening the same code and whatever the url was available for here that is swapped to this one azure uh, 
galaxy tech dot hyphen dev dot azure websites dot net okay so this url is mapped to this slot and this production url is mapped to this one and this became as a prod now the name it is just changed yeah same like blue green so now if you see here this is as a showing as a production okay that's it so whenever you are doing a, adding a slot uh, simply it is cloning that okay whatever from wherever you are taking that clone from there it is completely cloning and one thing i would like to tell you here so when this is assume this dev environment is ready so whatever the resources you don't think that like when we took the service plan it was one cpu 1.7 gb of ram this is the plan we took so in this plan it doesn't mean that this is also is taking one cpu 1.7 gb ram this is also got created under this one only you have total five slots can create in this plan so five slots if you create all the five slots will be using this resource only understood so you need to plan correctly whenever you are creating your resource if you want to create three slots means three environments and this is not sufficient for them then you need to go with another plan enough cpu in your frame if you want okay as of now this is little bit code that's why two slots can able to manage with one cpu and 1.7 gb ram but if in real time if it is a huge code at least it is a big code and uh, it is expecting more resources and you are creating multiple uh, slots here then it should take from that plan so it is not possible like you will get performance issues then so that you need to take care like once it's go to the production later on like customers are facing some issues then again you can switch it back also immediately again you can swap it here and uh, source to target again you can swap this one means roll back if something is having problem we should not get any downtime right front end users should not face any problem so immediately we can roll it back to the normal previous version generally what we'll do in the real time whatever the release version we deployed like if you are using github or bitbucket or whatever the repos you are using branch you are using whichever was the previous successful release version was running on the production will deploy with that version if latest deployment is having any issues in the front end application users that is how we'll do here this way also you can able to do or else if you integrate it with the like how we were doing a deployment process like if you see here configuration authentication once this is done i will show in the deployment process through github or bitbucket or azure devops repos also you can able to do that close now again it is back dev is back with this information and a prod is back with that information swap is done so this is a very very good feature this one and uh, auto scaling like uh, it can go up to the number like i don't know like they mentioned auto scale as a rules over there but generally it should mention how many instances it can go up to that uh, okay scale up here we can we see that what is it rule means rules it should give some number till what extent it can go okay scale up scale out this is the information and configuration customer pages require a premium app service plan 
configuration like uh, for your application you can configure generally uh what based on your code what kind of uh, configuration you want to make that you can configure here and authentication for microsoft uh, this one active directory you can configure this is application insights for monitoring and uh, where is that okay here mysql and previously in the configuration i think we can able to connect to the database if you see connection strings you can if you want to connect to the database like back end uh, this application is expecting database you want to store anything in the database and uh, obviously if it is a dynamic websites it cannot store in the application server itself back and it should have some database so if you have any azure database is using then uh, select the database different databases is provided by the azure mysql server sql server and uh, sql azure postgresql and then you can like uh, connection string if you provide the jdbc connection string then this will go and connect to the database and uh, remaining uh, few options what are the options left over we'll discuss uh, on monday and then uh, if it is finished quickly then we'll talk about uh, this one database service azure database service okay so in the meantime let me go through some questions if you need to make some more changes on the website how make whether do we need to make changes on the production slot since dev slot is default code now directly we never do any changes to the production environment so you need to first test it everything on the acceptance and then that will be deployed to the production so generally so here if you want to swap then everything is on acceptance is ready confirmed uh, tested by functional team testing team everything then it will be moved to the production just you can swap it so here we are modifying the default code which is available or else you need to use that github wherever uh, the code is available it is coming while configuring it was asking github right uh, repo branch name so go to that repo and modify there the code changes and it is integrated already with this app service it will come and deploy that is how it will work in real time obviously we use with this uh, same like applications only instead of creating virtual machines if you want to go you can run applications over here also so in real time how we deploy once we, while we are creating virtual machines and we're discussing manually i installed http and we are assuming that it is an uh, application but in real time in virtual machine how application will come either jenkins or azure devops cicd pipeline will come and deploy the application and where the code will be code will be in the repos whether it may be bitbucket github or uh, azure repo wherever it may be so jenkins or uh, azure devops or whatever the cicd tool it will take the code and it will deploy the application that is devops part we are not uh, worrying about it like so that's why we manually installed some web service and we were practicing so that will how the deployment comes all this will be in, you need to learn in the devops okay so here application we are not worried about how application will come and uh, fall on this environment that is not possible to discuss only thing is that's why we are taking some sample code and we are working on it so how to deploy the application 
you need to learn in azure devops or maybe aws devops what are the devops market is providing okay yeah pricing cost analysis i will tell you in the final sessions after finishing all these sessions i will discuss about cost analysis how we attach this is not a saas service rajesh this is a platform as a service that's why auto vertical scaling is not possible here scale up scale out is option is there right uh, so whatever the uh, pricing plan we took first of all you need to check whether auto scaling option is enabled or not for that one and if that is available up to what number then based on that uh, the scale up is going to happen Fifty fifty traffic is not possible. This is not an active active uh, environment to configure it. See again, whatever this URL is there, right? Again, you need to go to the custom domains and there you need to configure it. Or else, again, this URL you need to add it to the load balancer. That how it is possible. we used as a saas see for example my institute website is there if i want to run then i can use this option and i can run it right it doesn't need any database also just some code uh, we can use some repo attached to it and it can keep on running that is also possible so it is not a saas my website is running instead of hosting somewhere i can use it or some other website web applications also you can use software as a service means what let's say right now we are using go to meeting if this go to meeting is providing by the aws this service then it is called as a software as a service lot of customers are coming and they are using that i'm you i'm using that go to meeting and doing some other thing like taking sessions if anything happens to this go to meeting i will go and complain to the aws that this is not working that's just, that is called saas means completely we are using that service for some other purpose for our business platform as a service means on top of that software whatever is there it is ours only right they are providing only platform the software is us so we are maintaining it who is writing the code my developers are writing the code so that is not called as a software as a software as a service means what like we are choosing go to meeting assume just go to meeting is providing by the azure itself i am taking that service and using it if something code changes problems issues everything is taken care by the azure cloud only then that is called cloud as uh, software as a service they are giving that software go and use it if any issues comes you come back to me yeah mobile apps also you can uh, have here rest apis also you can have here inside this app sir i hope you can able to hear me so in the previous session we were talking about uh, this app services right so here like uh, we were discussing about some options we almost discussed uh, everything and uh, i think we discussed about custom domains uh, certificates <clears throat> so custom domains uh, if we talk about like uh, identity so for example identity means uh, in azure we have a another concept called key vaults concept the credentials if you want to store it there as a you want to configure as an environment variables you can use this identity a system assigned management manage identity is restricted to one per resource okay so with the help of that you can able to do that because once you get the azure ad credentials or what are the credentials you can store it in the key vault and from there you can pick it up 
and coming to the backups so you can take the backup of your this app service what are the data is inside that you can take the backup and uh, custom domains so you can configure custom domains sir uh, like uh, if you remember when we were discussing about traffic manager application gateway if you have already purchased a domain name then you purchase maybe in big rock in or godaddy and you have already your website because whatever the domain name we have here in the overview if you see we don't want this domain name uh whatever the name you provided valaxitech.azurewebsites.net this you, you don't want you want your own domain name then if you already purchased it somewhere else then with the help of this information because for this uh, app service this is an ip address so this ip address you can configure inside the um, dns entries with the help of your domain name which you purchased like i hope you guys remember right so in the dns you add the uh, add a record and give this ip and you can add alias record with the uh, valaxitech.com domain if you already purchased with the help of that you can create it or else uh, if you uh, app a service domain okay so if you don't have any domain name means you did not purchase any domain name then this app service is also providing that service so if you see here buy app service domain if you click here then you can also buy your own domain name for example if i see here in the domain uh, you can search like how you go and search in the godaddy uh, what are the site you want to buy the same thing you can able to buy for example valaxy tech if i want to search this domain is available because already we took this domain that's why it is not available and if you see in it six tech.com this is also not available so this domain is not available so they are suggesting uh, you can similar domains that are available same like good at it is also providing your option in case if you don't have domain then azure app service is also providing you there might be slight difference in the pricing compared to godaddy and all those things but uh, you can also buy it from here and you can configure this domain name to this app service so whenever you browse uh, so and so website then you, you are going to able to access that particular site so like whichever is available let's take a uh, well let's see take one dot com or like adventures work dot com this domain is also not available like well let's see tech one dot com this will be available so this is also not available okay give some name something like this okay so something like this you can buy it and uh, use this domain name and you need to provide all that information contact information uh, for what purpose for what organization you want to buy your contact details everything you can provide it and you can uh, buy this service so that is how you can either you already have domain name then use this information and uh, create a dns record you can configure it or else you can buy a new uh, domain from the app service itself and certificates so you can have by default certificates like uh, if you have as of now this app service is providing by default azure is providing that service for example if i go to overview.com <coughs> uh, if i tell browser see for your site already this is certificate is available if you see here where is that so already the certificate is available providing by the azure but if you want your own certificate then you can also upload your own certificate over here so if you see manager certificates so you can add your own certificate from here or else if you want to buy you can buy so no manager certificates to display add your first manager certificate so you can able to like uh, what are the your custom domain based on that you can able to upload your certificate also you can buy it 
so whenever you are buying like a, it's like for example you will buy in such a way like there will be multiple types of certificates valaxitech.com uh, this way something like this or maybe ww okay so or else uh, there will be like for example in future in the with the same domain we'll have a child domains also will be there uh, for example videos dot dot com and uh, for example mail dot dot com so something like this there will be like subdomains will also be there. child domains will also be there so whenever you are buying the domain name uh, the certificates based on the domain name only you are going to buy for your certificate if you go to godaddy and you want to buy the certificate they will ask what is your custom uh, the domain name if you tell valaxy.com which i purchased uh, based on that they will provide the certificate so that for certificate is for what for security https security for more security first of all why we need the certificate let's for example you guys are going to access valaxytech.com site okay so when user is trying to access this site uh, and you are going to browse what are the courses offering by the valaxy and uh, what is the course fee what is the curriculum everything you will watch for these kind of sites it doesn't require certificate because you are not sharing any critical information if you are accessing www.ici.com icicibank.com then when you are providing credentials then those kind of uh, websites need a certificate because you are providing some sensitive information your username password all this information so hackers can hack that and they can able to use that information for your site so whichever sites uh, you are providing critical information sensitive information those kind of sites are required certificates for your security for your websites thus for same galaxy tech for example uh, you are paying face through also from the same portal galaxytech.com or you are buying some videos and uh, recorded videos or previous batch videos or some other videos you are buying then you are making some payment at that time also we need certificate to this website otherwise it is not required if it is a general information then certificate is not required so for more security purpose whenever if a user is accessing to sharing uh, the data it will be travel through a plain text format in the network when you're typing uh, uh, Praveen as a username and abc123 as a password in the network also it will travel through same plain text format so hackers can hack it if the certificate is there then it will be encrypted non human readable format it will be encrypted so those kind of certificates when you are buying you can buy like a single domain certificate like a uh, valaxytech.com or else a subdomain subdomain means what uh, child domains means what like star dot valaxytech.com this way so before that what are the child domains you add everything will come under this certificate only so this certificate you can use it for these domains also now if you observe even microsoft also using what star dot azure websites dot net this certificate they purchased and they applied or mapped this certificate to the app services now whenever you are creating this app service whoever creating like for example if i create a new app service by default they are providing this domain name you see here dot azure website so like if you are one of the customer and lot of other customers are there so whatever the name they are going to provide uh, in it six tech uh, then in it six tech dot azure website dot com one url is going to be available and they can able to access it so this certificate is applying for all of those child domains that is an advantage of this uh, child domains uh, certificate if it is having with the child domains so in real world also whenever you are buying purchasing a certificate whether you are buying for single domain or for if it's required a uh, child domains also then you need to raise request for certificate either this way or this way if you are having multiple child domains also go with this way or else this way then remaining child domains also will be covered the same certificate you can use it for remaining also
this is called wild card certificates we call this as a wild card certificates understood so that is you can able to create and uh, networking so networking here inbound traffic web application and if you see here the purpose of this networking if you want to integrate this service with some other service also then obviously you should be add this into the networking concepts also okay so manage access and incoming services some other service want to access for example back end uh, database is there so back end database you want to connect to this application then it should be in the networking so as of now when it is created we did not mention any vnet over here right so if you want to configure this inside a vnet and you want uh, this should be access to the back end uh, databases then you can configure if you see here vnet integration so set up calls to app dependencies like databases so obviously web application needs a database so this is your front end application everything web app is here but back end database will be available like for example facebook lot of users are going to insert like uh, uploading photos videos everything where it is going to be stored back and database it is going to store so front end web application is going to help that's it it is not going to store all that information so as of now we created only this app services but where the data is going to store back end database you need required so when you created this app service if you remember again you can go and check you nowhere selected any vnet directly you just selected the uh, acu okay so azure compute unit you selected and you got only the resources cpu and ram but uh, nowhere you selected the vnet or networking concepts so in case if you want to communicate with this database then obviously you should integrate this with the vnet then only you, it is possible otherwise you cannot able to like uh, other applications apart from database if something else also want to access this uh, app services then it is not possible for that problem and uh, we have a kind of a traffic manager cdn uh, inbound networking features if you want to integrate with these resources also obviously you should have the networking and uh, scale up <coughs> scale out app service plan so whatever the plan we took based upon that features if you see auto scale is going to happen and uh, based on that it will scale up and scale down web jobs web jobs i am seeing this for the first time web jobs provide an easy way to run scripts or programs as background process in the context of your app so by the description itself we can understand like uh, you can create any scripts and if you want to execute in the background for this app so because you cannot able to connect it right uh, to create any scripts uh, it's not not like a vms uh, so you can able to execute it so these are about the application like uh, app services so you can also create it and these are all monitoring related stuff which is going to monitor the application insights will monitor and you can configure your own metrics also that uh, we'll see in the uh, monitoring sessions how we can configure monitoring for our services 